Hey everybody, Roxabox9 here with another Eternal Masters video, and I know I already put out a couple of these. This is likely going to be the last one, at least for the immediate right now, and then a couple more maybe in the next couple months in order to track how things are pacing out. Now, the reason I want to talk about this video is because there is some stuff going on in terms of the market fluctuation. So, for example, on mtgstocks.com, they are a fantastic website and they regularly have a look with some analysis in terms of card fluctuations but as with anything it's largely speculation many times what they're saying which means that there's different ways of interpreting things so this they just pulled together a couple of the cards with some trending graphs which is nice to look at but i'm also going to give you my two cents so for example this set just came out which means that right now generally prices are going to be dipping simply because everything was pre-ordered everyone was guesstimating and now the packs are going to start being opened and overall the number of cars that are in market are going to go up which means the overall cost of things are going to go down realize with a limited print set like this that doesn't really mean much it means a lot right now in the short term we're talking weeks maybe even a month or two in the long term or not even such a long term six to twelve months these dips and drops are not like a regular set they're not going to hold consistently so keep let's keep that in mind as we look here if our eternal masters the top three expensive cards we have mana crypt we have caracas and we have force of will and i i maybe would throw jason here as well uh, even though i know he's dipped down to 50 but he is value he is named recognition name value he's a go-to card for a lot of people his 50 dollars price tag i think is even less of a decrease hold than these other cards especially if uh, miracles continues to see play uh, okay, so for Mana Crypt, Mana Crypt is a commander card, primarily, and cube, primarily commander. All three of these are at Mythic, which means that the dips are not likely to hold long term, but in the immediate short term, I would expect it to drop. Likely, the price right now is about $100. It could, I would expect this to dip a little less. I even speculate it could be as low as 75 Maybe that's a little bit too aggressive of, a, of an expectation. But I could see this dropping to about ninety dollars. You could probably get those, especially if you look very aggressively, for ninety dollars or so. But I would expect this to net out between one and one twenty-five, and for the longer term, maybe up to one fifty. But I don't see it going back to the two hundred or two hundred plus um, that this, that the foils on this were from the judge promo, and in terms of the regulars. They were, I think, 100, 120. I wouldn't expect it to go significantly higher. I, I, the max I would see it going towards is 150. So if you're looking for one of these, I'd, I'd aim for the 90 to 100 range. Give it another week or so, it should dip a little more. Caracas. This card sees a lot more play than Mana Crypt in terms of multi-form. It does see play in Legacy, as he makes sure to note. And it was only printed once, so if you're looking to get the foils on this, you probably should but not immediately. I would give it another week or two. I think the foils were going for two to three hundred dollars. Uh, I would say if you can get one for about two fifty, two fifty mid to maybe three hundred, like that range, two fifty to three hundred. Uh, that for a foil, that's probably reasonable. Um, but it's it's more of a it's some a car that's this big and the foils are fluctuating so much it's very hard to tell where the foils will net out but the regular cards it's probably going to hold between 75 and 100 dollars right now it's a, it's a little under 100 i would wait a little bit longer grab them when they're about 75 80 dollars i wouldn't expect them to go less than that even as mythics because of the fact that the regular copies were even though there are fewer copies out there for a very long time they were low in fact it's only been recently they've gone over 100 dollars overall so that's what i'd be expecting Force of Will. This is a very weird example, and as he notes here, it was printed as an uncommon, which means the regular ones are see that much play that they're hundred that they were a hundred bucks at uncommon mass mass printing at uncommon. Now it's interesting to note here. So did you notice that the printing is actually more expensive than the original? This fact is hard to analyze since there's little base for comparison to other cards. I don't know if I agree with that. I think there's a very good reason why this card is more expensive, and that's very likely because of the art. Both arts are by Therese Nielsen. She's amazing, straight up. But this art is glorious, especially as a foil. But even not as a foil, it's beautiful looking artwork. And given that these are mythic, there are going to be fewer of them out there. And if anybody is 
prefers this artwork versus the other one, it's going to take more to get them just because there are fewer copies on the market, even if the overall pool of Force of Wills in the market is not as much. So if I was looking to get Force of Wills and I was trying to, if I was concerned about value, I would actually aim to get these Force of Wills versus the regular Force of Wills because I think that these will likely be the premium version going forward, especially a year from now when there are no, there are very few packs that you can find in market for any reasonable price. And this card has risen back to the 100 150 that it was going towards before this reprint this is this would be the copy i would look for now that's what i'm going to be doing for my own force of wills in terms of biggest losers I, overall i would say and this is something that quiet speculation has a little cheat sheet in terms of trade values something to think about is that most of the cards in the set are going to be very cheap overall the regular copies not foils foils are, are very weird we don't really know exactly what's going on with the foils for commander players, I would look for f commander foils in over the next three to five weeks and see if you can get them at a price that you feel comfortable with. I, I don't even want to speculate too much about it yet, but in terms of the regular copies, many, many, many of the cards are going to be under $10. Grab them while you can, especially if they're staples or commander staples that you'd want. In terms of the price range overall, we're going to be seeing drops, we're going to be seeing dips. And I would recommend for some of the cards, like Sensei's Dividing Top, Sylvan Library, uh, Vampiric Tutor, the cards that have proven themselves played across multiple formats, especially in Commander, I wouldn't be afraid to see if you can trade, buy, sell into them because three months out from now when the print run is gone and the prices start to rise on these again, then you're going to want to have had them for the cheap price that you're seeing here. In terms of losers, that's what I'm saying overall. Cards are going to continue dropping unless they're big staples. So if you're looking for smaller cards, not even the big commander staples like Sylvan Library and Fabric Tutor, if you're talking about the non-big ones, Gamble, Eight and a Half Tails, uh, Death Rite Shaman, he considers the best pick of the set just be in terms of it's dropping so such a steep dive in price. It's a great card. If you can get it for so cheap, great. Uh, for my perspective, we're talking more along the lines of Eight and a Half Tails and Gamble in terms of commander powerhouses that are going to drop in price. And going to drop more so these i wouldn't even pick them up yet i would give it another couple weeks two to four weeks keep an eye on it and then see from there someone i would definitely rec recommend checking if you don't follow him already mythic mtg tech he is fantastic fantastic channel overall and the reason i mention is because he does monthly speculation videos investment very very thoughtful especially for the eternal formats and we're talking vintage and legacy he does great stuff overall but those are the ones that he really seems to nail on point month over month and I really enjoy his videos. He has several videos around Eternal Masters. Definitely recommend checking it out because of the fact that he is so clear about his reasoning and I found him to be more often than not correct. Definitely look to him as a guy in a resource. Highest respect. Recommend you do too, especially regarding the Eternal formats. For Cavernous Souls, he actually didn't mention his re most recent video about Cavernous Souls. This is one of those cards that I was thinking they may print in this set because it does see in tribal decks in Legacy. It, it's kind of a go-to card in those decks. And it's also a very powerful card in Modern and Commander. So many formats, and this card has been rising, rising, rising in price. And the fact they didn't reprint it, they're probably going to print it in Modern Masters 3 whenever that is. Uh, or potentially they could print it in a regular set since it's non-set specific. But I recommend seeing if you can find a copy between $30 and $40 because unless you see a reprint soon, this is the kind of card that could easily shoot to $60, $70. And it's one that not being in Eternal Masters is likely going to see the price rise at least over the next short while. So those are my initial thoughts on this. Let me know what you guys think about Eternal Masters overall. Have you had fun opening? Any great experience? I'd love to hear. I myself am going to be hopefully drafting this weekend, my first box. I'm looking forward to it. And I'll let you know how it goes. Thanks for watching, everyone. As always, Rocks the Box 90 signing out. See you guys next time.